Good evening. Nice. Good evening, everyone. It is Tuesday, September 22nd, and we are live again. And gosh, it seems like, um, gosh, we haven't been live, I think, since Friday night. Because we didn't get a chance to do uh, to do Saturday because we were in Tucson. Anyway, so I think Friday night was the last time we went live. Anyway, seems like it's been forever. So, hope you guys are doing well. We uh, got a couple of great questions, I think, that might be helpful for you guys. Uh, one, I don't think I've ever actually gone over before. The other one I have. But, anyway, uh, good things are going on here. Just super, super busy. Um... And we have more videos coming out. A uh, new video coming out tomorrow. What's tomorrow's video about? I should know, but it's escaping me right now. We have been doing so many videos. Uh, hopefully next week we'll have another video on uh, Vicky's Table. We're kind of kind of moving forward with that a little bit. Uh, I think you guys will like that. Um, Another uh, senior moment on Saturday, uh, a Zoom interview on Friday. That was really cool. It was great. I think you guys are really going to like that one. Um, so uh, we got some people coming in. You want me to go ahead and mm -hmm. get going here? All right. So first things first, uh, I'm going to make it a little, I, I need a favor of you guys. And I, I, haven't, I haven't mentioned this for a while, and there, I know there's a lot of new people watching. If you guys want to get me a message, uh, please do not uh, message me through Facebook. I miss a lot of those messages. I hadn't been in there a couple days, and uh, I had missed uh, some direct messages. So you're going to hear from me much faster if you email me directly, eric at makeawoodsign.com. It appears that all of my... Email issues are behind me now. It appears we got it all squared away. So please email me, eric at makeawoodsign.com, rather than messaging me through Facebook. If you leave a comment on the YouTube channel, I see those. I, I'm in there every day. But sometimes uh, Facebook, I don't get in there um, as often as I used to. So uh, just a, a favor to me. I want to. I don't want you guys thinking that I'm you know, not wanting to answer your questions because I absolutely am. I just don't want to miss anything. So, uh, all right. So, first things first. Got an email from Pat, uh, Pat Alito. And he said, I was wondering, since I plan on using one-shot paint that you used on your latest sign, the Magoon's cabin sign, does one-shot, when applied, self-level itself so that you only have to apply it once? Um, the, the short answer is yes, if you are applying it on top of finish, which is the way we almost always do it. If you apply it on bare wood, uh, it still self-levels, but it's liable to soak in a little bit. So um, I would always apply it on top of the finish because it is an exterior paint. So you don't have any issues there and you don't have any issues with the paint changing colors if you put finish on top of it. So I put it on and then that's the last step, just like on the cabin sign that Vicky just painted. So um, he wants to carve a big sign and like the two bears one that I just did, but his paint doesn't have a smooth finish. So yes, Pat, uh, definitely the one shot will do exactly what you want. It flows out and it, um, it levels. And so you don't have any brush marks or anything. It's really good, again, if you apply it on top of finish. So that was a real quick one. If you guys have questions, you know how to get a hold of me. But I've done a lot of videos on this on that question, actually. So now, here's the one that's going to take a little bit longer. Got a call, or uh, I was actually texting with Tessa yesterday. She was having a tough time. Um, with her 90 degree bit in her router, it kept slipping, um, like it kept getting deeper as she was carving. And that is, um, in my opinion, there's only two different things that can, that can cause that. Let's, um, oh, let's see, let's grab, I bought some, brought some routers out. Let's grab this router. So if you, if, if you're carving, let's see if I'm down below the surface I am. If you are carving and that bit starts getting deeper in the middle of your carving, 
either the motor in the housing is slipping and what I in order to determine this what I would do is probably put a little piece of tape in here as a reference so you can see where uh, if it's if the motor is slipping inside of the housing and if that's the case then you sh this should be uh, adjustable you should have a little nut right here oops <laughs> don't want to break our glass table a little nut right here that you can adjust this one is nice and solid it doesn't have any problems but almost always there's a way to adjust this to make it tighter but this is solid this is not moving but that's the one way the other way is your bit literally is slipping out of the collet so um, we kind of went through a series of things trying to figure out what was going on we did determine it wasn't the motor sliding inside the housing so I uh, asked her some questions about how and I know uh, specifically for Tessa especially if you're a female you may have some issues with tightening your bits tight Tessa enough said it was actually getting shallower it was getting shallower okay um, well and that could happen too especially if you're carving um, if you're carving a, a harder wood Thank Gen you, generally speaking I think of it getting deeper but if it's getting shallower what's happening is the um, the drag on the bit is causing the bit to go further up into the collet that it normally it happens the other way but it can happen that way so uh, with Tessa and with uh, I know Tessa deals with some uh, some MS issues and there are other females that have a tough time getting your router uh, bit um, tight in the collet so I asked Tessa when she tightened up the bit she said she got it really tight but I asked her if she took her her housing off in order to tighten the bit and I think Tessa said no she didn't I always on these palm routers if it's a bigger router that you've got a lot of space then not necessarily but on these small palm routers I don't take a bit in or, or out or put a bit in without take, taking the housing off I always do uh, because it allows you so much more um, it gets it allows you to get much more torque on that number one most of them have this little shaft lock on there and it makes it more accessible um, and uh, and it also allows you uh, where's my wrenches let's see what wrench do I need for that it allows you to actually be able to hold it a little bit better <laughs> I'm gonna make a fool amount of myself so you can either loosen it that way and that way is pretty pretty tight so what I would do is I would loosen it Gosh, I don't want to break this glass table. Break my table. I'm gonna stand you're done. Up. I'm gonna stand up. You really should be standing up when you're doing this. I'm gonna stand up. So when you're loosening these, you've got to engage that. Make sure that's engaged. And once you do that, geez, that is <laughs> this is perfect for live TV. There. All right. So, and I do get it tight. I do uh, specifically tighten them up. Now, um, many of the routers, like I've talked before, have, uh, have flat spots here to where you can use a two wrench. And I've, this I have talked before. You can use a two wrench system. That really allows you much more, um, much more torque and uh, much more force, oops, sorry, to tighten and loosen. So I would definitely do that. If you have an issue with your bits being tight enough, I would just completely eliminate this, not even use it, and use a two-inch system. Now, for Tessa, the router that she was using, I think it's one she got from Menards, um, it doesn't have the two-inch option. This was all round, and it doesn't have the two-inch option. So what you can do there, if you can, what you can do there, and this is what I suggested to her. Take a little screwdriver. See the hole? Just stick that screwdriver in there. That will act like an extra wrench. And you can tighten it up that way. Now what I would do is probably turn it this way. And then I would use that screwdriver against the tabletop. And then if you want to do it on the other way in order to loosen it. 
So you can get much more torque on it that way with a two wrench or if you have the option. Now, some routers, like uh, I'll show you another one, doesn't allow you that option. This is the little Makita. This one is the, um, the Bauer. This one doesn't have that option, but it does have the two wrench option. So the second wrench will fit on there. Again, these shaft locks, they're okay, but they're, they really, I don't, if you have the option to get that bit tighter by uh, not using the shaft lock, I think you should. Um, especially if you have an issue with the, um, with the bit slipping, going up or going down. Now these, these shaft locks, some of them, like this one, I will particularly say is kind of chintzy. I really don't like this one at all. So I really like the two wrench option on this one. But, and it, even though it has a hole here, the hole, um, because I've got a profile bit in there, this is a short bit. If I had the profile bit in here, it would go down past that where I wouldn't be able to use the, um, the uh, screwdriver, it wouldn't go through just like it won't go through on this one uh, because that profile bit is there. But if I had a 90 in here, then I could. Um, the other, let me see, I think there was one other thing that I, um, oh yeah, if it turns out that you don't have enough strength in your hands to hold this in and turn your wrench, what you could do and this, this is not the, really the right clamp to do it, but you could, you know, put a little clamp. I, I had a little spring clamp. Uh, put a little clamp on this so you don't have to put pressure on this. Let that clamp hold it while you're tightening and loosening that, and that will keep that um, shaft lock engaged for you so, you so you've got an extra hand free. That's another way to go. I thought I had a little spring clamp in my pocket, but nope, I don't. I left it out uh, on the bench. Um, but uh, let's see. It seemed like there was something else. No, I guess that's about it. But anyway, guys, and especially you ladies, um, but uh, even the guys. Um, yeah, I'm done zooming in. Uh, even the guys. I, I wouldn't even consider trying to tighten up one of these router bits without taking the housings off. You just absolutely... I, I believe you need to take the housing off in order to get that bit tight enough. I just don't, I wouldn't trust it any other way, honestly. That's one of the reasons that I'm not real crazy about the, um, the rigid, because the rigid has that little retainer clip thing on there, makes it a little bit more cumbersome to get the housing off. I like, uh, I still, I didn't bring out a DeWalt. I still like the DeWalt best for, um, for depth adjustment, but I will say that these, uh, like the Bauer and the Makita, uh, the little rack and pinion that they have on there for taking the housing on and off works really well. All right, Justin, oh, every, so say hi to everybody. Rick, uh, Brad and Diana are here. Hey guys. Um, let's see, Justin Hellickson said, uh, I take and put a few drops of three in one oil and call it periodically as well. Is this something you do? Yes, it is something I do. I don't, I, I don't do it all the time. But it's something I do probably once every few months, uh, especially if, I, if it looks like they're, if it looks like it's getting a little, um, like a little coating on there. If you don't do it after a year or so, and you've cut a lot of signs, that the heat and the um, and expand and contraction thing will cause those to kind of uh, get kind of caked up with stuff. So yeah, I absolutely do that. Okay, Keith Soleil says, I'll be calling in an order tomorrow plus a question about making a template for me. Keith, if you email me the artwork, then um, I'll have something to look at before you call. So if you can email me the artwork, um, then I'll look at it. Mark Hollis, yes, we do make templates, but the, I have to look at the artwork to see if it's cuttable. Um, Let's see. Tessa so, said, yeah, she thinks that was it. So what Justin was talking about is the surface inside of here and the surface right there. You shouldn't have to zoom in, babe. The surface on here, which uh, that taper, 
is the same taper as the inside of the shaft here. So a little drop of oil on there and then kind of move that around will cause that thing uh, to tighten better. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, Gary Lichfield says you have a video on the rigid and how to take it off. Do I? Is that what he's asking? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, um, there's uh, several times that I've, uh, what am I doing? <laughs> Goober. Um, yes, I do. Anytime I've used the rigid when I've taken that housing off, um, honestly, you just have to kind of, well, let me show you. If this was the rigid and I loosened it up, it gets to the turn end. It, turn it, yeah. It gets to the end where that little clip is, that little clip that's got a butt, uh, like a little hump on it. Literally, I just do that on both sides, and it goes right past that little clip, and boom, you can take it right off. That's the way I do it. There might be a better way, but that's the way I do it. Uh, Keith, send me a picture, because I don't know what Eagle Nation is. Uh, let's see, Matt, Matt, Matt says, uh, modified my router base, still getting a lot of sawdust out of the front. Any suggestions? Still getting a lot of sawdust out of the front, meaning the side that's pointing toward you? Is that what you mean, Matt? Um, I do have a suggestion. Turn it around. So, uh, let's, let, me, let me show you. Uh, the funny thing is, you guys will see the video, the video that I uh, that I show tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow's video. Now I remember tomorrow's video. I actually talk about this, which may be the first time I've ever talked about it. So it's quite a coinky dinky that you ask about it. All right. So let's say I'm carving, and let's say it appears like there's no sawdust landing over here or not much, and it's all landing on me turn this around now and and I don't know why this is guys it may be a, a, a you know a power tool expert could tell me but each router for whatever reason not always but some routers tend to throw more sawdust out of one side than the other even if the holes are the same uh, like, like for instance, my big 618. When I'm using my big 618, if you guys go back and watch, that's my big DeWalt. If you guys go back and watch that, there will be times where in the middle of carving, you'll see me literally just turn it around. Because I don't know why it is, but sometimes that sawdust uh, will want to fly out of one side more than the other. So that's what I would suggest, Matt. Um, other than that, I don't know why that would be, I, Pam honestly. Says, Pam Berry says she's tried both ways on her 616 and she still gets sawdust in her face. Well, your 616 is already open in the back. Um, that is, uh, I, I actually, I did an experiment with kind of a dust collection thing. Again, you're going to see that tomorrow. Uh, and I'm kind of giving it away. I wasn't, wasn't really happy with my experiment, but we're going to play around with it a little bit more. Dad had uh, some ideas, but um, but from what I did, I think there's a better way to do it um, that I kind of talked about a little bit. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't I don't know exactly why that would be, other than that's just part of the deal. You you know you're making sawdust, you're. Uh, Break some eggs, you're going to uh, get some yolk on you. That's right. the way it uh, is. Robert Burgess says, have you ever used an airbrush to paint a sign? No, I have tried uh, with great um, frustration and uh, damage to the airbrush because it didn't work out well. Actually, I didn't. But, uh, yes, I have tried it, and I realized very quickly that I was terrible at it. So... But there are some guys that do the airbrush thing, and it works out great for them. So I, I would highly recommend it if you guys are good with an airbrush or you have the time and, and patience to get good with an airbrush, just go for it. Uh, I don't. <laughs> so, All right. Sign Carvers of the Day, Dwayne Throckmorton. Uh, terrific looking sign. So this one's Poplar. He's got seven coats of spar varnish on it. 
and it was going outside. When they saw it, when the customer saw it, they decided to keep it inside and had Dwayne make a much bigger version for their outside of, uh, outside of their store. Anyway, very, very cool. I love it, Dwayne. There's some really good ones tonight, guys. Um, Cliff Gardner. So this one is uh, obviously, it appears to be pine, and I don't have any notes on it, but obviously he did the burn thing on it. Really a cool logo. Great job, Cliff. I like it. Very nice. Uh, Donald. Donald Spicer. And this one is a really cool version of our family family template. Um, great job. I love the I love the edges. Terrific job, Donald. Looks great, buddy. Love it. Gosh, nice out here. It was it windy earlier. It was windy as heck earlier. Jack Durning. Uh, so he made this for his son's new house. That is beautiful. Looks like it's about five or six feet tall. Great job, Jack. Love it. Jeff Dale. So um, he's been carving for only, when he did this, he'd only been carving for about six weeks. And this is a wedding gift. And uh, the husband is a lineman and she is a nurse. So this kind of a uh, collaboration of two different uh, logos there. It is very cool. I really like it. Very unique. Jeff Clown. I think I'm saying that right. And this is uh, 11 inch by 11 inch pine. Use the black primer, uh, which is wa and water based Helmsman spar. Really nice job, man. Um, gosh, some really straight lines there. I love the shape of the board. Beautiful work. Jeff, beautiful. Uh, Gene Bowling. Oops, sorry. Gene Bowling. And um, I don't have any notes on this one, but man, I sure love that outside edge. Um, actually, I love just about everything about it. Looks like it's uh, cedar or redwood with some sapwood thrown in there. Beautiful work, Gene. I love it. Great job. Paul Simons or Simmons, I'm not I sure. Simons, he's in Manteca, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, maybe I I can't remember. Uh, he just, yeah, he just placed an order. This is Poplar, and he uh, used the profile in the sixty. I just think this one is so cool. Beautiful work, Paul. Great job, man. Uh, Gary Zellner. So this was interesting. Um, he was in a store and he ran into an old friend. He asked what Gary, the old friend asked what Gary was doing these days. Gary went out to the car, brought in a sign and the owners of the store saw the sign um, and they ordered this sign. Uh, it's the first thing, uh, it's the first thing people see when they walk in the store. Uh, uh, so moral of the story, always have samples in your car. <laughs> Great job, Gary. I love it. Terrific work. Great job. And Bruce, or Chad Birch. Chad Birch. Interesting little logo there. Fishing, uh, he's a fishing killer, I guess. The fish killer. Great job. Fish hooks and a skull. Don't see that very every day. Anyway, great job, you guys. What a great group of sign carvers of the day. I will be adding these along with some others. Uh, every time I do a sign carvers of the day, I put it in a file and uh, then I upload them onto the Facebook page, the Dave Signs Facebook page. I think I'm on um, SCOTD album number four. So they should show up in there sometime in the next week or two. Okay. Anything I need to... Um, I need to answer? Okay. Man, it's getting dark earlier these days. Yeah. The sun's going down. Oh, yes. Uh, what's his name? Hold on. Uh, hold on. Okay. I'm hanging. Um, 
So remember, guys. Jeff uh, Foreman. He, why don't you got your jig hits? You got I, them yesterday, right? I did get them yesterday, uh, and that's Jeff, right? Jeff. Yeah. yeah. So Jeff, I was going to send you an email. Am I supposed to use those just as they are, or do I put trailers you on them, or or jig them. heads, or whatever? So send me an email. Let's talk through email because Vicky's giving me the cutoff signal. But yes, I did get them. And uh, yes. man, you said a bunch of them. That thing must have weighed five pounds. So thank you so much, Jeff. Uh, I will try them, but let's talk tonight. Send me an email and let me know what I'm supposed to, how I'm supposed to use those. I need help. <laughs> Lots of help. Right. Anyway, so that is it, guys. Um, I hope this was helpful. If you guys have any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. And uh, please email me rather than message me through Facebook. And we will be on again on Thursday. Tomorrow. Uh, Tell Marin good night. <laughs> Tell Marin good night. That's great. That's uh, Justin's daughter, mm -hmm. right? Um, okay, guys. And again, uh, there'll be a new Zoom on Friday. And if you guys want to be... Uh, Want to do one of those Zoom in interviews with us? Shoot me an email. Let me know. Um, I, I want to keep that list going. I've still got several to do, but I don't want to run out of people. And everybody loves to meet everybody else. So anyway, thanks again, guys. Uh, thanks so much. We love you. And we will see you tomorrow and, and Thursday and every day, I guess. <laughs> Bye. Good night, guys. Bye, guys.